Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review we are looking at the Square Enix Play Arts Kai Variant Star Wars Stormtrooper. And before we get into the figure, let's take a look at the package so you guys can see what it looks like. Similar to Boba Fett's, it's more of a standard pose, just a basic figure on here with the other ones in the background because they are the troopers. Uh, not anything particularly stylized. But the back of the package looks pretty cool. Again, similar to Fett, we have the three poses with the visor in the background. Looks pretty nice. He comes with the standard display stage, and then of course we have some more stuff going on inside there. Alright, let's look at the figure. He stands roughly 26 centimeters tall, which places him at about 10 and a half inches. Pretty much standard size at this point for the Play Arts Kai variants. And this guy looks pretty darn good. Uh, I'm not actually getting this for myself. I got it for a friend of mine who actually will also be reviewing it once he gets it. Um, I'm only going to collect the name figures because I'm not that much of a Star Wars fan, but this guy is definitely one that I would like to have in my collection. I just have to limit myself somehow. Before we get into the figure, let's look at the accessories. You can see he has a fist hand on either side. Comes that way in the package. And then we also get trigger finger hands for either side. So that's pretty cool. And then we get the style pose hands for either side also. And you can see the variation in the finishes for the black there going across the middle. And then we have the white. We get the long rifle right here which is nicely detailed. And it has the functioning bipod on there. So that's a pretty cool thing, I think. Nice feature. And then we also get the smaller rifle, which has the moving stock, which I don't really get because it doesn't go any farther than this back here. So I think what that's for is maybe just to create a foregrip. I don't know, but that's all it does in the front also. So it looks kind of un unfinished either way. I don't really get that, but it is there. So and there you go. It looks cool though. I mean, it's a fine gun. It's just the stock is kind of strange. And then we get this, which is like a blast from the laser. It's a little warped from the packaging and I would be remiss to not point out that it is rather phallic in design and looks pretty odd uh, even on the guns. It just pegs in here but it still looks pretty weird I think. I mean I guess it's okay. It still looks kind of odd though. A little hair dryer or hot water will fix that bend in it but I can't say I really recommend posing it like that. That laser beam looks pretty strange. Uh, we do have a pouch on his back here to hold this gun, the smaller gun, and you can put it in, uh, but go that way, I think it can, yes, you can just put it in like that. The strap does unsnap, so you can put it in the regular way, but this whole back piece is open, so you can just stick it in like that. And it's really big, but that's why it goes behind him mostly, can't even tell it's there. Nice, nice that they included it though, and it's got some really cool shading and paint features on there, so I like it, even though it's really big and kind of awkward, looks pretty good. Now the figure itself, it does look pretty good. They made all of the white parts glossy, so it has a very Stormtrooper feel to it. And they did include some battle damage throughout. You can see a little bit of dirt and mud being kicked up across the bottom of his like boot armor and things like that. And then it's it's kind of throughout the rest of the figure as well, just not as much as the lower lower limbs and the feet. Still looks really cool and they did a great job with all of the line work, all the panel lining makes the armor really pop and there's lots of grayish blue shading throughout also which gives it a really nice effect. Uh, the paintwork on the helmet's really nice with these blue lines in here on the side pieces and then the visor, the eye visors are particularly glossy so they stand out rather well. Very cool looking figure. All the details I was expecting are there. You can see the nice paintwork inside there. He's not 100% symmetrical everywhere. Uh, most of him is, but then things like on the torso it's a little bit asymmetrical. And then the pouches that hang down are. And then the knee pads. The only thing that bugs me, I wish this knee pad was on both sides, but it still works well and looks pretty cool and unique, so I'm okay with that. As far as articulation goes, the head is on a double ball peg, which you can kind of see into if you try, but otherwise you're just going to be able to pose the head around just fine. Shoulder armor is really big, but it's nice and soft, and the way they made it is you can still pose him pretty well, bring the arm around, and it just kind of moves with the body, and it creates a rather seamless look, so that's pretty cool. We have the ball hinge style shoulder, so that's going to swivel on the one hinge, then you get a, a shoulder swivel on the other, and then you have also a bicep swivel. So if you can't get these arms into the pose you need to get them in, you're doing something wrong. He shouldn't have too much trouble posing with his rifle at all. I really like the way they did that shoulder armor. It creates a very seamless look. It was kind of stuck to the torso when I opened the figure up, but 
I just went like that and it unstuck, so no big deal. Uh, elbows, standard ball hinge, and they pretty well hidden from the front just because it's all black. But even once you have it out, they have it covered down here, and then the elbow pad hides it also for the most part, so that's pretty good. Now the torso, all of the armor is really soft, but you have these two little flaps in here, which I didn't even notice at first. These are separated at the top and the bottom, so when you want to bring the armor around, it'll just squish in and it doesn't look too bad and works pretty well. Uh, as far as the hinge itself, we have that new design, which has the hinge in the top and the ball peg in the bottom. So you get good range of motion, but the way it's done is kind of like Batman and Robin, where there's a pretty large gap if you lean it too far. Uh, but you can get a good range of motion going forward and back, you just have to watch out for the gapping. Then even side to side, really good range, and then of course you can swivel it around. So as long as you're willing to account for those gaps and to not go too far, you get pretty good range of motion, and I think it's it actually works pretty well for this guy. Uh, the belt is a separate piece, so as you can see that just floats around to hide the lower gaps down here because the crotch is also a floating piece and we have a ball peg for the lower torso which has really good range of motion and with that two-part floating crotch slash belt you can really hide that articulation and get imposed however you want to so I'm okay with that. It's just this upper torso piece that gets a little frustrating but again it'll be okay once you put some time into it. These guys are just soft pieces that hide the front parts and they work pretty well. For the hips, we can bring the legs all the way up no problem, and it's actually not too bad even going back here. As far as going to the side, pretty limited, just like fat. I don't think you really need to bring them out to the side too far, so that's okay by me. Uh, we get a thigh swivel down here at the top of the armor and at the thigh itself, or at the hip itself, so you really won't have any trouble posing the hips that way. The knees, obviously double jointed knees. They do get a little cumbersome, the way the knee pads are connected and the way the armor sticks out. But you do get a good range and since it's black on the inside, it kind of hides itself so it doesn't look too too bad and you do get that range so I guess that's a good thing. Ankles are a little less well designed because you really just see the ball peg. Uh, but you do get really good range of motion out of it so I guess it depends on what you're looking for. You can get a really nice ankle rocker. But if you're going to put them in a more standard stance, that ankle is pretty ugly, so I don't know how I feel about that. It's going to be kind of like up to you as to how you want to pose the figure and how you want to have him on the shelf. Still though, a cool figure. I don't think he's as cool, and maybe it's just because it's a trooper rather than Fett or Vader. I don't think he's as cool as those guys, but if you're into troopers, then this is probably one for you. It's a pretty nice design. I think most people are going to like it, although I'm sure some of you Star Wars fans are going to say they shouldn't have changed something that wasn't broken. I don't know. I like it, and I think you guys probably will too, but you're going to have to decide since this is a rather um, personal type of preference, rather you, whether you like the classics or not. It's kind of up to you. The figure itself, though, is technically good, so that should help you make your decision. There it is, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can see my upcoming figure reviews, custom figures, and other good stuff. And in the meantime, keep collecting.